This is day seven of reading Revelation. When he broke open the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw that the seven angels who stood before God were given seven trumpets. Another angel came and stood at the altar holding a gold censer. He was given a great quantity of incense to offer, along with the prayers of all the holy ones on the gold altar that was before the throne. The smoke of the incense, along with the prayers of the holy ones, went up before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with burning coals from the altar, and hurled it down to the earth. There were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. The seven angels who were holding the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. When the first one blew his trumpet, there came hail and fire mixed with blood, which was hurled down to the earth. A third of the land was burned up, along with a third of the trees and all green grass. When the second angel blew his trumpet, something like a large burning mountain was hurled into the sea. A third of the sea turned to blood, a third of the creatures living in the sea died, and a third of the ships were wrecked. When the third angel blew his trumpet, a large star burning like a torch fell from the sky. It fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The star was called Wormwood, and a third of all the water turned to Wormwood. Many people died from this water because it was made bitter. When the fourth angel blew his trumpet, a third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them became dark. The day lost its light for a third of the time, as did the night. Then I looked again and heard an eagle flying high overhead cry out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth from the rest of the trumpet blasts that the three angels are about to blow. Now we come to the so-called trumpet vision. Notice that it begins with silence and with incense. These are obvious symbols of prayer and worship. So something that is calm and holy is used to frame the violent images that follow. But also is a reminder to us that whatever may come to us in our lives, if we enter into those experiences beginning with prayer, beginning with worship, with the grounding that comes from being still in the presence of God, those events, joyful, sorrowful, harrowing, whatever they may be, will be interpreted differently. We'll see them differently because we will see them in the context of where we began. In other words, in the presence of God rather than feeling alone, feeling as if we are isolated and without any support. But then we do, in fact, go into things that are, are more troubling. The trumpet here may be a, an echo of the shofar that's used in Judaism to mark the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, the holy days, the, the, the new year in, in Judaism. But it could also be an imperial symbol. It could be a royal fanfare. It could be a sign that somehow God, the, 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 the ruler, the monarch of the universe, is is speaking, is acting, is present in a way that the world can't ignore. Interestingly, it, this whole passage brings up a question along the lines of, isn't the created world God's creation too? In other words, why would we think that all of creation, the things that we see, the sky, the earth, the oceans, would be destroyed? Is this not something that God considers to be precious? You recall that in creation, in the creation story in Genesis, God creates each thing, sees that it's good, and so in that way blesses it as being a valuable and, and worthy creation of God. So if, that, if what we're seeing in Revelation is the destruction of pieces of what we would think of as being the, the material evidence of God's creation, we should ask ourselves, what does this say about economia? You remember the idea of housekeeping, uh, economy, the, the where we began all of these discussions. 
maybe what we think of as permanent and solid isn't. If nature can be overthrown, what else may be possible? I think we should see in this a very clear signal from the writer of Revelation that the kingdom of God is not to be understood as being about things. It's not to be understood to be about possessions or institutions, but rather about the working out of the will of God in the world in whatever way, and indeed in every way that God ordains. So as we see that which appears to be very solid, the, the earth under our feet, shaking and being moved and ultimately being destroyed as the story continues, it should perhaps not be as fearful an image as we might imagine, quite so fearsome an image as we might imagine. What we're being told is there will be the paring away of that which is not essential. There's a turning over of that which is certainly valuable, not without its place in God's vision of creation, but that does not serve God's purposes in the moment or perhaps in the future. So we should carry that image in our own hearts as we hold lightly onto those pieces of creation that have been entrusted also to us. <laughs> Yeah.